Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, I'm doing a re-repair on Purdy, my 1996 XK8. And that relates to the speaker in the steering column that does the click, click, click for your indicators and the boop, 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 when you try and take it out of gear without touching the brake pedal, and also beeps to tell you the hood is all the way back. By hood, we mean, and goes, beep to tell you that the roof is all the way back. Um, I repaired it in a previous video, which was a secret to the XK8 video, showing you the speaker had actually uh, blown, the little speaker behind there, and I replaced it. It's It worked for about mm, two months, something like that, and then failed, and I just haven't got round to checking it out. Very unlikely that speaker's gone again. There's not a lot of current going to it. So I'm suspecting maybe I have uh, pinched a wire when I reconnected it or there's something else in there that's just not a good connection. So we're going in there to check. While I'm over at my bench, we're now into August. So we have to say goodbye to Doug Warren's wonderful picture of his XK8 at Roms which I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing correctly, but you know, we have a go. And we flip over to, onto August. And we get Lou Grillo's car, Blossom. And Blossom is in San Clemente, USA. We also get to say hi, and they're gonna be on my wall for a month. So let's see who we got down here. We've got Jules Red Eye. That's a fabulous photo. I really like that photo. One across to the right, we have Camille Denizka. Sorry if I've uh, ruined your surname there, Camille. Then we have Kevin Taylor. And from memory, Kevin's in South Africa. Uh, it's the colour of his driveway that reminded me of that. It's uh, very yellow. Then we have Mark Massey. And there's a little background story, I'm sure, to that photo. I believe that's an author sat in the car at the moment. I can't remember the name. And over on the right, Michael Smith. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Borton Underwater. Wonderful place. Really, really nice place to go visit. Now, Let's get the roof off of Purdy and have a look what I've done with this little speaker. The only bits and pieces I've got myself is my, my strong light. Um, this is where the speaker is in question, but it's no longer operating. So I've got to take this cowl off. I've got a multimeter with a couple of different uh, test leads just in case. Mirror, because awkward, a screwdriver and a pair of pliers and I probably won't even need the pair of pliers. So we're not talking lots of tools for this job. So to do this job, what you want to do is get your steering wheel or column, I should say, up and out and leave that lever down. You may well have electronically controlled steering columns. Great. In that case, there's a joystick on this side. Please manoeuvre that steering wheel to the up and out position. I half suspect some of my problem is that because mine's mechanical, which is quite unusual, spec-wise, um, I've managed to pinch the wire in because there's a lot of levers and bits and pieces going on here and the wires are not well hidden or protected. There's two crosshead screws. There we go. And pull it over the ignition barrel. And down, be careful there's why is attached to the back of this? Yep. Maneuver my 
lever back out and the other lever through the slots there we go and we're out and on my car the only thing that's holding it is the knob for the adjustment of the instrument brightness so just hanging down there although it's not strictly necessary I'm going to take this off as much to make it easier to film as anything else so literally pull the little knob off the other end put somewhere safe and then one screw holds it in and that is detached now that we can see here's the speaker I'm going to do this as a bit of forensic science, I'm not going to maul or pull everything out straight away because at the end of the day something has gone wrong. There's a little wire there that looks like it could have been pinched. I don't think that's a speaker wire. And we do have these big levers. So I'm just going to check around them to see if they're near anything could catch anything it's quite close to the speaker but it doesn't touch and this one does move in amongst the wiring at the back so that one looks a bit more likely to cause grief if either does So nothing is obvious. Next thing is, when you've got a problem like this that's, it's not intermittent because it's all the time, but it did work and now it doesn't. I've disturbed things now, so I'm going to turn the ignition on. There we go. And turn the indicators on. No noise. And also try and pull the gear stick back. No noise. So, it's not a case of I've disturbed it and now it works again. The speaker is just clipped into position like so. So you can pull that down. And that's the join I made. And it's a decent connection. It's soldered. It's got shrink tubing on it. So I'm not anticipating that being an issue. It's where the wiring goes after that. When you follow the wiring back, it becomes green with a red tracer and green with a black tracer. And although I don't think I'd better show you in camera view goes up here and enters this uh, cloth tape little loom there and then goes into that white connector block so what I'm going to do is detach that white connector block from its clip disconnect it and just have a little look you can just push up on that white connector, the bottom, and it unhooks it from the metal bracket, like so. So 
So, grab all of the top. Oh, there is a button. Okay, that's out. There's a button on the flange at the top here. Just press that. That's your pops. So there's our cable. There's our speaker. So, what is going on? First thing, we just want to identify the pins that go to black, green with a black tracer, got it, and green with a red tracer, got it. There and there. Right, it's the first two pins that are present on this side. So I'm going to hook up a couple of test leads. We're going to go positive. Going to go positive. Negative. Um, and with the test leads on the speaker, I'm just going to put this on ohms. Common. Okay, that's really odd. This is suggesting I've got an open circuit across the speaker. Uh, that could be bad, as in flux on the solder, just, but no, this is an open circuit. So it does suggest the speaker is blown. Hmm. Let's see if we can put out a tiny amount of voltage from it. All right, connections in place. Touch speaker cone. Nope. This could be another blown speaker, but it's so unlikely. Why would that go? It's the right speaker. So there's something else we can try. So I rather crudely just parallel wired up this test speaker. And I've plugged the white connector back in. Oh, we already heard a static pop. Just turning on the ignition. And it works. Hmm. So other than a dry solder joint, it would seem that speaker's gone open circuit. Ah, they're so unlikely. I mean, that is not going to be supplied with any amplified sound. This speaker is um, quite good at generating a fair amount of noise for no input, but hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try and resolder the joints there just to see if they're dry joints. If not, then that's coming off and I'm going to put a new speaker in and we're done. I've got this old uh, little powered set of speakers they're worth all of about four quid, I reckon. And 
which ones was I undoing? Oh well. Just going to undo the speaker housings on it because this looks suitably small. My other option was to look at some uh, earphones that I got knocking around and look at the speakers inside them. Oops. Find that screw. Thank you. That looks like a right size speaker. I'm not desperately worried about whether it's the right ohmage or anything else. Because is it better than the one I've got? Yep. Okay, so let's just tease the wires out as much as I can to there. And then cut them off. Unfortunately, they are glued in rather than fitted to these plastic housings. But I'm sure I'll be able to release them using a little bit of imagination and violence. There's a bit of a staked joint, I think. Not really effective, but they've tried to heat stake them into place and glue them. Okay, so having dismantled this little iPod speaker thing I've been knocking around, worth all of about four pounds, I've managed to liberate some little speakers of the right sort of size. I don't know because, you know, this is so cheap and nasty, not even marked up with a homage. But I know that they work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tin the ends of these wires, add a bit of solder to them basically, and tack them on to the wires in the jag. Cheap and nasty little speaker. Well, there's a cheap and nasty little speaker soldered into position. Ignition off, pull the gear stick. Hazard warnings. So we're in business. All we're going to do now is took that back up here and reassemble. with that so it, ooh. <laughs> so it looks like this one's done and the secret was it's just another failed speaker and this can only be a quality thing so this one is a GELEC G-E-L-E-C CT7 stroke 79 1847 64 ohm 10.05 speaker and I so say that came in Jaguar packaging, not from Jaguar, in fairness. But uh, it did match the one that I took out, different brand, but uh, same homage, etc. So, hmm, maybe just source your own speaker quite cheaply. And that's the easier way to solve this problem. I'm a lot happier with having that in there because if that blows, then I can investigate further and 
I'm not going to be spending money replacing it. So, did a quick one, put this back together, and we're back on the road. Yeehaw! If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.